Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're going to be learning how to do mass to mass stoichiometry, in other words, grams to gram stoichiometry. If you haven't seen my other stoichiometry videos, start with mole to mole. I'll post it in the description below. You definitely want to start there. Um, so before you even start doing one of these problems, you need to make sure that your chemical equation is balanced. If it isn't, go ahead and balance it first before you even read the word problem. If you can't remember how to balance a chemical equation, I'll post that video in the description below as well for you. So remember your roadmap. You always wanna start on a green square and you wanna end up on a red square. Today, we're gonna to be starting with grams of one um, either compound or element, whatever they give you. We're gonna be transferring that into moles of the same compound or element. And then we're gonna transfer it to moles of a different, whichever ending compound or element that we want. And then we're gonna transfer those moles into grams finally, which is what the question asked for, um, for us to actually do. And you can see, I put kind of a bridge down here and I color coded it so that you can remember that diagonal down needs to be the same units all the time so we can cancel those out. So starting grams, starting grams, starting moles, starting moles, desired moles, like whatever the question's asking you for, that um, either element or compound moles, and the same thing diagonal down, and then your desired grams, whatever the question is asking for essentially goes in this box. So let's get into this and try it. First up, we need to see, is our chemical equation balanced? And this one is. Because it's balanced, we're good to go. We can read our question. It says, how many grams of iron would be produced if 200 grams of iron three oxide reacts with an excess of carbon? So because this is balanced, we can jump right into our bridge. Let's lay out the components of our bridge um, when we're doing this. And because we went through the three different arrows on our roadmap, that means we're making three T's, in other words, three step problems. So one T, two T's, and three T's in our bridge just kind of set us up right. You always start with what you're given. In this case, we're gonna start with our given mass. Then we're gonna jump on over and we're gonna do our molar mass of our given compound, um, and that's gonna be the ratio. And then we're gonna do the mole to mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation. And then we're gonna end it with the molar mass of our desired element or compound, whichever one it is that the question asked for. That might sound complicated, but let's step through it and you'll see what I mean. We always start with what we're given. The 200 grams of Fe2O3, okay? So diagonal down needs to be grams of Fe2O3, and it's going to be a molar mass ratio. So this is always gonna be equal to one mole of that Fe2O3. Well, if I go to the periodic table, I can look up Fe, multiply that by two, look up oxygen, multiply that by three, and then add those together, and that's gonna give me the molar mass, and that number comes out to 159.7 grams. I can cancel out these units right now before I even go further. So now I'm with um, moles of Fe2O3. So diagonal down must be moles of Fe2O3. This column, I need to go up to my balanced chemical equation, look for Fe2O3, it's right here. And I need to see how many moles I have. I have two of them. So that two moles of Fe2O3 is gonna go on the bottom. But now I want to transfer that to moles of whatever my question is asking me for. This one is saying, how many grams of iron? Iron is Fe, so the top is gonna to be four because of the big number in front is representing the moles. So four moles of Fe um, is gonna go at the top. I can cancel out my units right now of moles of Fe2, moles of Fe2, perfect. And then we can do diagonal down again. So moles of Fe needs to go right here as well, moles of Fe. And this is gonna be um, the box that I always want to end at. How many grams of iron? That means I need to end with grams of Fe. So this is gonna be another molar mass. So one mole of Fe is equal to the molar mass of Fe. And we can go to the periodic table, see that iron is um, 55.85 grams. So we can cancel out those moles of Fe units. And now do our math. We're gonna multiply the entire top so 200 times one times four times 55.85, and we end up getting 44,680. And we're gonna divide that by the bottom. We multiply across on the bottom. 
So 159.7 times 2 times 1, and we end up getting 319.4. And then we divide these in our calculator. Um, top number goes first in the calculator. And you end up getting 319.9 grams of iron. Okay, let's try another one. We're using the same balanced equation, so we don't have to worry about balancing it. We're just going to focus on the bridge right now. How many grams of carbon dioxide would be produced if 127.3 grams of carbon reacted with an excess Fe2O3? Let's set it up, right? What goes in each column? So our given mass, the molar mass of our given, our mole to mole ratio where we can change it, and then our molar ratio of what we want. So we are starting with 127 uh, grams, well, 127.3 grams of carbon. So diagonal down, grams of carbon, and that's gonna be equal to one mole of carbon, right? Where do we find this grams of carbon? We're going to the periodic table to get the molar mass, and that is 12.01 grams. Cancel out those units, right? Diagonals, cancel them out. Now we can continue. So this is moles of carbon, which means the bottom is gonna be moles of carbon. And we're going up to our balanced chemical equation this time. Three moles of carbon is right here, so that's gonna go on the bottom. The top is what we wanna change it into. We wanna change this one into carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and we have three of those. So this is a three to three ratio. In other words, it's a one to one ratio. I could have written that down as well. You're gonna get the same answer in the end, but we're just gonna leave it three to three just to show you all, okay? So um, we have moles of carbon dioxide. Diagonal down has to be moles of carbon dioxide. And we're gonna change this into grams because that's what our question's asking for, grams of carbon dioxide. So we know that one mole, which is on the bottom, of carbon dioxide equals the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Go to the periodic table, search up carbon, add it to two oxygens, and you're gonna get 44.01 grams. Cancel those units, and then we can go ahead, multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide these answers, and you end up getting 466.9 grams of carbon or carbon dioxide. You guys, I hope this was helpful. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe to see more, and if you need any more help with stoichiometry or chemistry for that matter, check out my other videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, everybody.